Hello, everybody. This is our sixth episode in Harmony and Hoofs. Uh, and our sixth episode is called Connection. I'm a little bit scattered here because I got a cat here on my uh, desk, so I apologize for that. It is called Contribution, Recognizing the Value of Our Partnership. And just a quick recap on our full six episodes in this series. We had the first one, which was Certainty. And then we had uh, the certainty was the routines, um, the, the um, things that both horses and humans need in order to feel secure and, and safe in our day-to-day -day stuff. And then we had routines, uh, not routines. We had, I, I'm doing this via Zoom today. And it's a little bit distracting, so I apologize for my flighty. Need to just take a deep breath <sighs> and breathe into that power center, that three inches below my belly button, that grounding space, that part of me that sits on top of the horse and helps us both feel grounded. Our second episode was about variety, and that is having things in our lives to look forward to. And for horses, it's the opportunity to get out on the trail, the opportunity to hang out in a pasture with other horses, getting to do things that they don't normally do. Now, we don't want to add too much variety into certainty because then that creates a little bit of instability and anxiety both in horses and women. Our third episode was significance. Both horses and women need to feel significant, to know that we matter, to be respected, to be honored, to feel worthy. Episode four was love and connection. It's kind of self-explanatory um, in some ways. For some of us, love can be a little uncertain on what that really means and it can bring up feelings of vulnerability and being hurt and things like that where with horses having that open heart to connect with our horses will help them to feel safe and connected and willing to connect back with us one of the reasons it's so easy for women to connect more deeply with a horse than it is with another human being is because horses are just pure you know what you see is what you get most of the time um they're forgiving they're present they um uh, love to connect with other beings and they love to connect with us. The fifth episode was growth. And um, that was about being able to expand our knowledge and our wisdom and our education, as well as the horses. When we are growing, we, just setting some timer right here for me, you guys. Um, when we are growing and when our horses are growing, it creates connection, it creates love, it creates significance, it creates, or it strengthens. It doesn't create these things, it strengthens, it builds on significance and variety and certainty. It it's what makes us grow as individuals and it strengthens the trust and the connection and the confidence and makes us excited as long as it's done correctly. Um, in my program, Unbridled Freedom, I teach a lot about the three zones, which is a bullseye, 
and the center is our comfort zone, then we have our learning zone and we have the panic zone. It's very important that both horse and woman are encouraged to go out of their comfort zone into the learning zone in order to learn and grow. But it's also really important that they are never pushed. We are never pushed into our panic zone where we um, activate that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight and either us or our horse or both. Um, and if we do find ourselves in that zone, it's really important to back out as soon as we can. Today is contribution. And I've been thinking a lot about what does contribution mean? So first we're going to explore what it means in the six basic needs for a human. We first have to have certainty to feel confident and comfortable and safe and secure in order to want to bring variety into our lives. And through variety, we get to express and explore our significance and how we are received in the world. Through that, all of those three, then we're, we feel ready to explore love and connection. We all want love, but can we give love? We all want to feel connected, but can we allow others to connect? That's a need that needs to be met. And then we want to grow and we want to become more. We want to be the best we can be, do all we can do. And then we reach that point when all five of those needs are being fulfilled then we want to we want to contribute. We want to give back. We want to leave a legacy. Okay, so that's how it plays out in the human. The contribution in the horses is similar because horses like humans live in in community. They live in herds, they live in bands. Bands are a smaller gathering more like a family unit where a herd is more like a community, the neighborhood. So like when you have, we'll use a boarding facility as, as an example, some have stalls and paddocks and some have pastures that they live in. So the ones that are living in stalls and paddocks, they're kind of in their community. They're not really a band where they're getting to really engage physically tactilely uh, hierarchy with one another. They have their own space. Whereas in a pasture environment, that is more of a, a family dynamic, a band. They have to coexist in a enclosed environment and they have to learn where their place is in that unit and how they contribute to that unit. And uh, I had a student of mine ask me, well, how does contribution show up with horses? And um, I've been thinking about that. And there's a couple of uh, real life examples that I'd like to give you here on my property. I have 12 horses and I have one whose name is Uncle Gino. And Uncle Gino is um, going to be 25 on July 4th. And he suffers from PTSD. And he has had it. it. He had some. It started, I think, when he was like six months old and continued to build on it until he was about three to five. And by then it was deeply ingrained. He came to me, my herd. He joined my my um, group in, when he was seven years old. And he has such severe PTSD that he is danger to ride. He's dangerous to himself. He's dangerous to, to my, to me. He nearly killed the two of us. I, uh, took him to, uh, one of my mentors for a summer where I used to go every summer. And I, I spent that entire summer working with him and it was unanimously agreed upon that he suffered deeply ingrained PTSD and would never be able to be ridden. However, his role, his contribution in our family and our herd is he has raised all my orphan babies. And so I've been um, 
blessed with having some orphan babies over the years. And um, I put them with Gino and he takes very good care of them and he teaches them herd dynamics, which they would not otherwise learn. So it's interesting when you have a breeding facility or you have domestic horse settings where they take the horses, the babies away from their family or their dams when they're six months old <laughs> and put them off with either themselves or with other youngsters, they're, they're robbing these horses the opportunity to truly learn, learn herd dynamics and what their, where their place is. And actually, in a lot of ways, are depriving them of those six human, those six basic needs we've been talking about. So Gino's contribution is he raises the babies. We live along a mountainside that we have a few mountain lions that live on the mountain behind us, and they have been known to cross through our property. And when I have the babies, they're up in the training facility behind the house and not with the rest of the herds. And um, Gino has always been there to keep them safe. I have Asha, who is a 12-year-old um, Mustang. She's fairly, she's semi-wild. And her contribution in our herd is that she is keenly aware of everything that's going around, uh, going on in our neighborhood. She has a little mound of dirt in her pasture and uh, she'll go, her ears will go up and she'll look off in the distance and she'll run up and get on that mound and she'll look and stare and all the other horses, she'll get their attention and they'll all look and stare. So she's the lookout um, contributor in the herd. She knows what's going on. And then there is Dakota. And Dakota um, is a, oh, she's a 16-year-old Mustang. She's been with me. Um, I got her in 2017, rehomed her. She came back to me in 2020. She's been with me for four years now. And she, when she was gone, that little stint, she was gone for two two years, I think. Um, yeah, about about a year and a half, two years. When she came during that time, she was in Colorado and she was out in a herd with um, I think there was like a hundred other horses out on a large four hundred acre pasture, and she had buddied up with one other horse. And during the night, a mountain lion came in and. Um, went after her and the other horse and because she's a Mustang who had lived in the wild she was able to av avoid the lion but the mountain lion did um, take down her her herd mate and so when that mountain lion and our around our property has come through our property or along the fence line or is in the vicinity she lets everybody know and it's very clear that there's a mountain lion in the vicinity and that's her role. So that's her contribution. So now let's talk about how do they make a contribution in our relationship and how do we make a contribution? What, what is the dynamics there between the herd of two, you and your horse? Well, my program is all about that relationship, creating a deep, meaningful relationship. Every buddy's life thrives on relationships. It begins with the relationship with ourselves and then our family members and then our community. And it branches out depending on how extroverted you are or how introverted you are. But we all have relationships in our lives. And I am really beginning to deeply understand how valuable our relationship with our horses are. Because when we can master a relationship with a thousand pound prey animal, that we to a degree have to be vulnerable at the same time we have to be a leader. We have to be willing to be an inclusive leader where we are, we listen to our partners. 
We have to be willing to open our hearts and take their feedback. We have to be willing to be courageous and present and grounded for them. Their contribution in that partnership is they give us immediate, pure, unbiased feedback. They're extremely forgiving. They love interacting with us. They love to play games. They love to be adventurous. They love to grow. They're very funny and they're very athletic and they have a lot to say if we know how to listen. I teach in my program and it's what I practice in my relationships and my partnerships with my own herd is that I want my horse to be a participant in the relationship. I want them to know that they have a voice and they have a choice. I want to work as a team. And so I want to be able to ask them to do something show them what it is, and then let them show me that they know what I'm asking and they know how to do it and they know how to do it in rhythm with me. That's their contribution. They have, their senses are so incredibly keen and so more attuned than ours are, that when I am with my horse, I pay attention. I pay attention to what they're saying to me with their ears and their eyes and their, their facial expressions and the tension in their body and the movement of their body. Like Dakota, when I'm out on the trail and Dakota lets me know there's a bear or a mountain lion in the vicinity and we need to pay attention. That's her contribution to the relationship. And my contribution is to say, I hear you and I believe you and I am going to navigate us safely through and you are going to help me do so. So one of the things that I work with my women a lot on, and I say my women, they're my beautiful, beautiful, amazing clients and students who have set out on a journey to be the best that they can be for their horses. I help them recognize when they are micromanaging their horses. They set them out on a task and then they keep telling them and keep telling them and keep telling them. And it doles out your horse. It's disrespectful to your horse. It doesn't give your horse this. It doesn't honor their significance. You're avoiding the connection and you're not allowing them to grow, nor are you growing. When you feel the need to micromanage, that's out of fear and lack of trust. I teach my horses that they have a job and it's my partner and we are 51, 49 in that partnership. I'm 51 because I'm the leader. And when we sat out on the trail, I let them know where we're going, the direction, the gate, meaning the stride. I'm focused on where we're going so they can feel that in my body. And I give them a neutral rein and I sit with a balanced seat. And I don't say anything until they have dropped their responsibility and stopped contributing to the journey. And then and only then will I say something to them. And as soon as they respond with, oh, okay, or whoops, my bad. <laughs> I started to stroll here, but okay, I'm back on track. Then I shut up and give them back that neutral rein. That allows them 
as the partner of this amazing relationship to uphold their responsibilities and be a um a valuable contribution to the relationship this is deep stuff everybody i have i have um I am feeling really passionate right now. <laughs> I've had horses all my life. In 2000, I made the commitment. I made two commitments at the same time and didn't really realize it until the other day when I was thinking about it. One was I set out on a, on a, a path of self-development to heal the wounding of my lifetime so that I could feel inner peace and I could achieve the things that I knew in my heart I was meant to achieve. And I set out to be the best horse woman I could be for horses because that is part of my life purpose is horses and making it a better world for them. In 2018, I set out and started my own horsemanship program called Hard Soul Confidence Based Horsemanship. And in 2020, I developed Unbridled Freedom. It was called a different thing, Pathway to True Unity back then, but it's evolved as I have into Unbridled Freedom. And within that, I, the more that I teach it and the more that I live it and breathe it and practice it with my own horses, the more that I realize that the relationship I have with my horse is the most incredible opportunity to have meaningful relationships in every other area of my life, beginning with me. And so that's why I get pretty darn passionate about all of this. So I, I want to share with you, this timer is gonna go off and I wanna stop it. I want to share with all of you that these six basic needs, I look at them in a circle and you know we live on a we live on a sphere which is a circle we rotate around a clock which is a circle horses live on a routine of the same clock the seasons are circular they circle around horses and humans thrive on circles it's all kind of the magic of the universal energy but these six basic needs, they are a circle with six sections and they all need equal amount of attention and devotion. They can't, if any of them are deprived, we don't feel balanced inside, nor do our horses. But if we can begin to nurture these and pay attention to these in ourselves and in our horses, magic is going to happen. I promise you. I've been playing with this for the last six weeks and then some, and will continue to in everything I do with the horses and with myself. And, and it's, it's, it's powerful. So our next series is going to be called Unbridled Unity. Mastering balance and bond in partnership. And this just is going to just, just be an amazing transition from this series into the next series. Because in that partnership, which at the root of the, the successful partnership is an amazing relationship. And we both have very, very important roles that we play in the success of our partnership, which becomes our part, our, our relationship, which becomes our partnership. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be next Thursday. 
Again, thank you so much for being a part of this journey, you guys. I just love sharing these things with you. I hope you find value in them. Comment below. Tell me what you think. Share your ahas. Share your experiences. Remember, we are all here together in this community, and we are nurturing our relationships together. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. We will see you next week.